You know, I'm impressed today to speak to you on what is real Christianity. And um, I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. That's our text today. Just sharing a little bit about what is real Christianity. Um, again, I'm really impressed to, to share that with you, to speak that to you. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says this. If anyone, someone say anyone. So if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. What kind of a new creation? A new one. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I'm reading from a couple other translations. The New Living says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. Behold, all things a new life, excuse me, has begun. Someone say a new life. A new life. And then the um, Amplified says it this way. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. Someone say the new has come. And then finally, the passion says it this way. Now, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become a, an entirely new person. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. Someone say fresh. fresh. Someone say new. new. That reminded of me of the children and the, their vibrancy and the brightness on their face, and their joy. You know, even though sometimes it changes when you become older, but there's something about living that we've got to maintain. That's a freshness, a newness, a life. And, and so we don't get dim and drabby, but we're full of life. And you know, that's not just for children. It changes somewhat, but, but, it's, but that life should be still vibrant, and particularly as a believer. So right here it says, the new has come. Someone say new. new. Someone say fresh. fresh. And so real Christianity. So Paul says here, uh, um, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So why this is important, I feel the Lord impressed me to share this. We could share about other things going into the new year. But uh, this is foundational, but it's important, it's critical. It's probably the most important thing you have to explore and learn about. So real Christianity is the reception of the life and the nature of God into our spirits. And really allowing this life to take possession of every area of our lives. And it's really a progressive thing because the more we learn, the more we allow God to be in us and to us what he wants to be. That's right. And so this is something we grow in and why this is so important and why we maybe emphasize and repeat certain things is to really see that this becomes fresh and alive in you. And that you don't allow Christianity to become Christianism or just some philosophy. Uh, just some dead works that you go through every weekend. But this is what you live. That's right. This takes possession of your life. Someone say, someone say real Christianity. Real Christianity. So, so real. So now, uh, so progressively you learn this. For example, when I was 16, I received this life. I, be, I became born again at the age of 16. And I'll never forget, I, I was at Castle Frank um, High School. That's where they had these special meetings. Um, so I was 16 years of age. I, did, I didn't live in that area. We were living in Mississauga with my parents, but they had some special meetings. And so the uh, minister was preaching in that auditorium, and they gave the altar call. And, you know, it's not that I felt so emotional about it. I just said, yeah, I need to receive this. Mm -hmm. See, this life has to be what? Received. Not just hearing it, but receiving it. Mm -hmm. So at that time, nobody coerced me, no one um, telling me what to do, but I heard the message, they gave that invitation, and I went down and received Jesus. Someone say receive. receive. I received Jesus as the Lord of my life. And so that meant now, I said, Jesus, come into my heart. I asked him to forgive me of my sins. Uh, the, uh, the, pat, or the minister led us in a prayer, 
But you see, when I received Jesus as the Lord of my life, what really happened was the life of God came on the inside of me. I was not just forgiven, I became a new creation. So his life came on the inside of me. And I was changed from the inside. And that means new desires came into my life. I, I made a decision to follow God. At 16, that means this life is for anybody. It's for the 10 year old. It's for the 15 year old, the 16 year old, the 20 year old, the 80 year old. This life is for everybody. For five, there's young children as consciously, five years old, as consciously made the decision. Yes, I need to receive Jesus. So now it is a, now listen, it's a decision that each person makes in their own heart. Not what someone makes them do, but it's a decision once we hear this good news, because this life has to be received. That's why God tells us, tell the good news. Why? Because people don't just get it automatically. God is not going to twist someone's will. Someone's not gonna, God's not going to make anybody serve him. He gives the good news, and what do we do? We receive it. So at 16, I received Jesus. But again, breaking it down, what did I really receive? The life and the nature of God to come into my spirit. Amen? amen. Say amen if you've done that yourself. Amen. And I said it's progressive. So this is now, so, so really the walk of Christianity is allowing this life to take possession of our lives. And so from that moment forward, I learned, started learning how to let this life determine, help me make right decisions. Help me not to get into wrong relationships. And I credit the Jesus for helping me so that I didn't get into a lot of bad relationships. That's right, that's right. I listened to me making wrong commitments right. that I wasn't ready to. You know, stayed in the right, so staying out of wrong company and wrong association. And you know, those, those um, teenage years of the critical age, you know, these phases of life. And so, you know, I, I was kept out of wrong relationships, wrong men, male relationships, wrong female relationships. I really believe because this life I started, I wanted God's will for my life. And I allowed him to help me make right decisions. Now, what you understand is this, God came into your life so you could be the best version of yourself. God doesn't create robots. He doesn't, you know, he's not going to, let, let's say, twist you so that you're not yourself. That's why, isn't it interesting, we have different personalities. This Christmas, when we went when we, as a family, I had a greater appreciation for our different personalities. All the four of us, we have different love languages which is how you give love and show love. Now, isn't that interesting? All of us is different. Everyone in this room is different. Everyone is unique. You, know, you don't lose that uniqueness when you become born again. God comes into you so that that can be expressed in its greatest way. So, so greater expression of who you are. So that's why God doesn't want people looking exactly the same dressing exactly the same no you've got to be yourself but when you get born again god comes in you so that there's a greater expression of who you really are does that make sense so in christ so christ is in you say it with me christ is in me christ is in me. that's what the new birth is right christ in you so when you've received jesus when you're born again that is you've received jesus as saving lord which means the life the nature of God comes on the inside of you. And there's two things I see in the New Testament that God comes into your life to do. That you would trust him with, for everything and that you'd love people. You see it all throughout the New Testament. Those are two main things Paul would give credit to believers as they came into the family of God. So I said as a teenager, helping me to make right decisions. Helping me to treat people right. You know, whether it's in home, church, or under, in, in school, or wherever. You know, so God comes into your life so you can be the best version of yourself, not a failure. God didn't come, God didn't come into your life to make you a failure. That's why you've got to be excited about this life. God wants you to, I mean, wants you to be bold and strong and powerful and beautiful 
in serving him and love him and treat him as a real person. That's why we want you to stir that up for yourself. So again, just as this life, it has to be personally received, not imposed upon you. But then after that, you need to grow in that rela your relationship with the Lord. So get to know him personally. Amen. You know, get, engage him, talk to him, so that that reality stays fresh. Someone say fresh. Fresh. So now, so I want you, so look at that scripture again. If anyone is in Christ, he's what? A new creation. So the life of God is in me. Say it with me, the life of God is in me. The life of God is in me. See, it's in you. So when you got born again, his life came into you. His nature became a part of you. And now he wants that life to have full expression. And he wants you to grow in that. I said it's progressive because we don't know everything about God. We don't know everything about what that life can do in us. But through our commitment and learning day by day, we get to give God give full expression in our lives. We make right decisions. It helped this life, this, this commitment to Christ, this reception of Christ helped me to make right relationships so that I didn't, let's say, have perverted relationships. I see, it kept me out of wrong relationships with women. Boy, I tell you, thank God for that. Boy, thank God. For that. I'm, that's more important than people think. It helped, it helped me. Thank God for that. I, listen, I don't have all these people that have broken their hearts. You know, it helped us so we don't, have, we don't have children all over the place that I don't know who they are. I'm going to tell you. you see what, so this, this is what this life of God did for me. See, at an early age, so the earlier, the better. Now, why we're making this distinction, we're not just talking about people going to church. We're talking about people who know they've received the life of God and they're growing in this life. And they're allowing this life to take full possession of their lives. I, listen, I, I used to have a terrible temper when I was 14, 15. Terrible. It, so I was the kind of person, if I was angry, I'd pick up whatever was around and throw it at you. It was a brick. It, it happened to me. That's what I might throw at you. So I had a terrible temper. When I got born again, I think back now, that changed. I, that immediately. That was so some things change instantly when you're born again. See, that life. Someone say the life of God. The life of God. So that changed. And so what happened? That, that changed in me so that I would never do that again. And then there was another thing. I was really argumentative. I was that lawyer type. Well, you know what? If we had an argument, I would make you look bad. I, I would love to make you look bad. I would take the wrong side of an argument just to prove you I could beat you. See, so that was me. But you know, when I, when I got, and I would argue with my parents a lot. I'd get into an argument with my parents. When I got born again, somehow I realized, no, that's not, that's wrong. These are my parents. I saw, and so in that, those 16, 17, you know, I realized that they're my parents. Regardless if I think they're wrong, there's a certain way I'm supposed to treat them. Someone say the life of God. The life of God. See, this life changed how I thought. So this life now, it changed my spirit. But what did it do? It went out and started changing my soul. Yes. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. Your intellect. So it started going into those areas. So we don't want the life of God just locked away in our spirit. You know, you are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a physical body. And most Christians, the life of God is trapped in their spirit. It doesn't get out. God wants it to get out and affect your soul. So that affects your emotions, so you can, you can manage your emotions, you can manage your words, your attitudes. Yes. And so I allowed that life to get out into my emotions, into my attitude, so that it affected my relationship with my parents. You see that? Someone say, the life of God is in me. The life of God is say it with me, I'm born again. I'm born again. So the life of God, the nature of God. And the nature of God is the love of God. And that came on the inside of you. And God want, wants that life to get out and really impact your, 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 um, your life and your nature. Now go to this scripture. I might spend most of my time here. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Say it again. The life of God is in me. The life of God is in me. Say it with me. Thank God I'm born again. Thank God I'm born again. So you've got to keep this. So when you know this is what happened to me. 
I'm born again. You know, you know, think about it. We celebrate our birthdays, right? And that's an interesting celebration, you know, where you celebrate, yeah, I'm, I'm born again. I'm born. I was born. That's, that's the date you were born. And in many cases, you celebrate your life. You celebrate your existence. And why this scripture is important is, and when you remember when you got born again, and what actually happened, and when you received, that's, I'm, and I'm emphasizing that, when you actually received Christ, it's important to remember that so that you keep that fresh, like how you remember your birthday. So yes, I did get born again. And sometimes it helps to go back to that time mentally when you, got, when you got born again and you realize, yes, I really did have that. I got born again. It's almost like going back when you have, you have wedding anniversaries. And what do you do? You remember when you got married. You have children. You remember their birthdays. So those are critical times when you remember, yes, this wasn't just something that didn't, didn't mean anything. This actually happened. I received the life of God on the inside of me, and I'm a changed person. Amen. And so you help to feed that, to keep that strong and powerful, and that you never talk yourself or let anybody to talk you out of this life of God that's in you. Say it with me. The life of God is in me. All things are passed away. All things have become new. So Paul is saying, you know, he's telling them. Remember, he told them this before and he's reminding them. You are a new creation. Yes. You're brand new. The old life is gone. Yes. Regardless of what your old life was, it, it gone. it's gone. A new life, the life of God came. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And as I'm talking to you, regardless of who you are, regardless of where you've been, regardless of your age, isn't it wonderful? God has made it possible for you to live in his life. And you could think about, think about this way. I may be talking, you might be hearing this message, and you may, have a, be, um, may look back and you have some regrets, as we all may have regrets. But isn't it wonderful? The life of God. God loves you so much Amen. that he gives you an opportunity to experience his life. Isn't that wonderful? And what that tells you is this. You, when you say, when you really get a hold of this and you really appreciate, man, I'm born again. God's life is in me. You know what it tells you and me? How much God values you. How much he considers you worthy. The dignity he's placed on your life. That he said, you know what, no matter what you've done, no matter how many mess ups you've made or I've made, no matter how many mistakes, you know what? I want you so much. I purchased you. I want to be inside of you. I want to live in you so that you can be the best person I made you to be. That's good news. Amen. Say it again. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. In, Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. The new, the fresh has come. Amen. So when you also, when you know this, you no longer beat yourself up over past mistakes. You don't because you realize, no, I'm going to trust God. Amen. He's in me. His life is in me. Yes. Now turn, you turn with me. Acts, I said Acts chapter 2. I said that right. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. This is an interesting scripture. Praise God. So it says, um, Acts chapter 2, verse 41. This is, this is interesting because it tells you what happened. Really, there's a pattern here when people got born again. So the, this was the first church, if you will, of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first church. In verse 41 and 42 of Acts chapter 2, it says, Then those who gladly, oh, gladly, someone say gladly. gladly. See, gladly received. See, received. That's why we emphasize receiving at the beginning of this message. They received his word, were what? Baptized. So they gladly received his word, which means they gladly received the new birth. They gladly received the life of God, the nature of God. They received it. Notice, they received. So again, I'm saying again, the life of God must be received. It's not a religion that a family just adopts. It is something you personally receive, right? So it said, then those who gladly received his word were baptized. So now, one of the things they followed when people came into 
the, the family of God, received the life of God, they were water baptized. So that's why uh, I should say it again. If you've never been water baptized, that's an ordinance we practice because the New Testament practiced it. New Testament, the first church did that. And what were they doing when they said, man, I'm born again. I've received the life of God. And the water baptism, they got water baptized in public. Why? To let people around them know, the public know, I'm born again. I'm a, I've received the life of Jesus. My life has changed. The, so that's a demonstration of the, remember, you go down in water, you come up. It's a sign of the old is past and the new has come. Amen. And it's a sign that I'm not going back to the old life. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? And so that's why the Lord told me we've got to share about this real Christianity. This real life that now we've left the old and now we're living a new life for God. And again, we say it again. That's for every person, old, middle-aged, or young. No matter who you are, this life is for you and me. Isn't that wonderful? But it says this. Then those who glad to receive the word were baptized. And that day were added about 3,000 souls. Now, I love this because why would it say the number if those people just went away, they immediately be, became, became a part of the family of God. Someone say the church is a family. The church is a family. Which means you're my brother. You're my sister. Turn to someone, tell them you're my sister. If, there's, if it's a lady, if it's a brother, say you're my brother. You've got to, and you've got to really take that to heart. When we got born again, the church that, we, that I was first a part of, that's what we called. They called me Brother Carl. Now, they might have been more traditional about that, but there was a conviction about that. I'm part of a family. Yeah. And I'm, you know, you don't just treat your family anyway. There's a certain way you treat, you, you have a certain dignity, a certain love, a certain a affection for those in your family. And the same thing in, in the kingdom of God, in the family of God. So it says, then they um, were added unto them. Then it says this, verse 42, and they continued, someone say continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine watch this fellowship breaking of bread and in prayers i've had this verse in my heart for a couple months to share with you so i'm glad to get to the lord release me to share this with you now this is really important as soon as the people talking about real christianity in every generation when people truly received the life of god the nature of god what happened they became part of the family of God. Why is that so important? Because God is what? Father. You're not a father if you don't have what? Children. His family are his children. So we are part of what? The family of God. Now God takes that literally. That's why he sent Jesus to die for us because he wanted to restore or reclaim his family. So he sees us as his children. And so they acted that way, believing that in how they treated one another. So there's four things you see these people came. As soon as they got the life of God, as soon as they got born again. Now, it wasn't something, you know, I'm just going to a building. I'm just going through the rituals of a religion. No, this was very real. I'm now, I'm in the family of God. The life of God is in me. The old is past. So on, and it says four things now. They came together, and it says they steadfastly did this. They continually did this. Which means that in this life, they didn't, there wasn't, you don't see anything about where people feeling like, you know, feeling guilty if they're not a part of this. Mm -hmm. This was a, a love compulsion. Yes. I'm a part of the family of God. I know God as my father. And now I'm, I get to be connected to other members of his family. What, what, what a thrill. And it says they continued steadfastly what? In this family now, coming together, they came around in the apostles' doctrine. Put that word doctrine means teaching. So what, what was that teaching? In this new life, they had to be instructed in what this life means. How do you live now? How do you apply God's word as someone who has the life and nature of God? Yeah, how do you live now as a believer where the old is past and the new is come? How do you work this out if you're married and you're married to a, an unbeliever? How do you live for God? 
How are you, how do you take, how do you, you know, carry this through in your daily walk? And so they are to be taught. And so it says they continued what? Steadfastly. All the time. Why? This life has to be, it has to be learned. It has to be walked out. It has to, you get to understand maybe the questions you have, they're answered over time. The progression of this life as we learn the ways of God, then we get to see how to, how to walk in this, how to, how to stay full of this life. So it says they continued what? Steadfastly. Someone say steadfastly. steadfastly. Turn to someone say steadfast. steadfast. They continued steadfast. I mean, you know, what you do steadfastly is what you grow in. See, it's what you become established in. So they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. So in the teaching of God's word. And I mean, you know, there's a lot we need to know. What you knew last year, you can know even more this year. You're supposed to continually be adding to your knowledge of God's word. And it's not just knowledge just to fill your head, but it's knowledge for application. So that our lives take on the nature of God. Really, so that we more, more and more, we act and live like Jesus. Jesus is the model son, if you will. Is the model child in the family. And so we become like, more like him through our individual personalities. But then the next thing is really wonderful. Because they all, someone say they all. They all did this. All of them. Soon as every believer. Talk about real Christianity. Is, is receiving the life, the nature, the love of God on the inside of our spirits and allowing that life to take possession of every area of our lives progressively. So we grow in it. That's why I'll be, I'm better this year as a believer than I was last year. And the key is that you shouldn't be regressing. And you can if you don't pay attention to your beliefs. If you don't, stay, if you don't practice the word of God. If you don't st um, keep walking in the love of God. And so they continued steadfastly, kept hearing the word of God, kept putting it in practice, kept believing God, kept moving forward. Then it says number two is this, fellowship. Right, underline, you should underline that, circle it. Because right after the teaching of God's word, it says fellowship. Well, what's fellowship? That's building relationships with other believers. Now, so that means in the family, it's not just people, you know, he hearing a sterile word and not, or being by themselves. And if you know, you can't grow in love if you live by yourself. <laughs> so in the family of God, God is a family. God said, now, you're hearing my word, you're knowing how to live. Now, I want you to build relationships with other believers. God didn't send you to this church just to come sit in a chair and go home. No, he wants you to come, hear the word of God, trust him, believe him, but then develop healthy relationships with other believers. Amen. So I love the fact number, God, fellowship is really important That's to right. God. And you know, fellowship implies how we treat one another, how we love one another. Yes. And so this was big in the New Testament church. And it's big in our church. Why? Because we want to walk in the ways of God. So as soon as believers got this life and nature, they were instructed in how the importance of fellowship. Someone say fellowship. Fellowship. The word fellowship means communion. It means um, build relationship. It means connecting one with another. And so this is important. This, I mean, put it at, right at the top of your list. I'm telling you how we treat one another. And we know that means if you're building fellowship with one another, I'm not lying to you. I'm not deceiving you. I'm not using my, my, um, my uh, whatever I've got to connive you. I'm not using my business to pull, up, pull one over your eyes. I'm not saying I'm a Christian so I can rip you off. No, this was real fellowship, real relationship where, where believers got to know one another. They got to trust one another. They were encouraging to one another. I mean, how many of you know we need these relationships? I need those kind of people in my life. And you know, you need those kinds of people in your life. And so it came by them being steadfast. They knew this life was in them. They started letting this life go out. I remember I told you part of the new birth means the, the nature of God is in you. 
and they started showing this love to one another. See, men treating men correctly, men treating women correctly. We read Timothy, in Timothy, 1 Timothy 5, so we know this is true because he said this, 1 Timothy 5, let the, um, he said, he told Timothy, who was a pastor, he says, treat the older men as you would your father. That means treat them with respect, with dignity. Treat the women similarly. Treat the younger women, see them with, with a pure eye. See that? And so that's what God they started letting this life. That's why, get this now, that's why the standard of God's word is so important. Yes. That means men, that when you, young, you treat younger women, women of your age, you treat them with purity. That's, right. that's why in the church, we uphold a high standard that we don't, we don't tolerate perversion right. of any kind. Why? Because it's against the life of God. And when people miss it, we need to be quick to do what? To repent. Are you listening to me? See, this is all part of what? Fellowship. Someone say fellowship. 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 Just give me a few moments. This is so important, people. I'm this is real Christianity. Someone say real Christianity. Now think about it. Can you meet it now? That means you're amongst people you can trust. It means that you know these people are not saying one thing in front of you and something else behind your back. This means you know, man, can you imagine? And it doesn't mean we're perfect, we're growing into this. But this was the standard of God's love. People were encouraged to let this love nature of God, let it affect our lives, let it affect our relationships, let it affect our marriages, let it affect the children, See, this, see, so fellowship was huge, big. Does that make sense to everybody? Can, does this have a greater, maybe, impact on your mind? Because, see, religion or, or wrong religion is just about something mental and philosophical and that I just believe on a holiday. Mm -hmm. We're talking, this is real life that affects us every day. And so it creates a safe environment. So it says this, steadfastly in the teaching of God's word. Number two, fellowship. Number three... I'm going to read it from this one. The new, let me read this other one. New Living Translation says it this way. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. So third one, they ate with one another. I think that's interesting. See, don't you eat with your family? Most people you eat with is with your family or those closest to you. So we see here, eating one with another, that is an extension of their fellowship. This is, this is how much they love one another. They're sharing meals, they're going out for dinner with one another. They're being invited to one another's homes. Now how many of you know then, what's behind all of that? Love. This love nature of God. I'm, I'm, we want to be with one another. We want to be a blessing to one another. Can you see the motivation that I'm in your life to be a blessing and you're thinking the same way about me, that we're not using one another. We're not manipulating one another. We truly care about one another. Amen. We want, we want for, you want for my children what you want for yours. Are you listening? That's the mentality they had. And then it says, and communion. So communion, when they had communion back in that day, communion was part of a meal. So it was a, a, a part of a, a greater meal that they had. And then finally it says what? Prayer. Now you notice prayer, and I'm not, saying, don't, I'm not saying this is exactly what is intended. Prayer is number four. And I think that's interesting because, you see, the prayer came after the word, fellowship, meals and communion. Now why is that? Because you have greater prayer, stronger prayer, more effective prayer when, when you're in unity right. with the people you're praying with. Right. So prayers are ineffective oftentimes. They're not as strong, not as effective and powerful because there's not the kind of unity and fellowship believers have. Mm -hmm. So that's why, I mean, you know, if, I, if I'm praying with somebody and I know, they know that my heart is right towards them. Their heart is right towards me. And you know, we'll have greater power. But suppose you're praying with me, but you don't trust me. 
Or in the back of your mind, there's a question, you know, man. Or, or suppose I ripped you off and I never gave it, so, I never restored it back to you. Or I never apologized. I never repented. Now, those prayers really don't have any effect. Do you see? You just think, oh, that's just an hypocrite anyway. I don't really believe in him. I'm telling you, we're talking about real Christianity. Someone say real Christianity. Real Christianity. This is what God wants. He wants, I mean, that's, he wants congregations, many of them, all over our city. People in love with Jesus. People knowing they have this life on the, on the inside of them. Living this. And in fact, Jesus said this as I close. He said, then shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have what? Love one for another. I said that to say this. In Acts, it showed they carried out Jesus' command. The structure of the church proved that they carried out his command. This life was in them. And they, this, it grew till it took, hope, took over not only their lives, it affected all their relationships, it affected the church, and then the people who make up the church impacted the community and showed this love to the world. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. So we're not in a religion, we're in a relationship. Amen. We're part of the family of God. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Say it with me as we go. The life of God is in me. The life of God is in me. I'm going to let this life affect every area of my life. How I treat one another. How we love one another. How I show kindness patience, patience and, respect and respect to my brothers and sisters, to my brothers and sisters. In, Jesus name. in Jesus name. Amen. So let this life go out, as I said, into your soul, into your thinking. This life as you meditate, that's how we get healed oftentimes. You let this life, you know, just let this life go out into your physical body. We'll talk about that in a year. But I'm telling you, the life of God is in me. Just close your eyes right now. Say this with me. The life of God is in me. The life of God is in me. I'm born again. Old things are passed away. The, old, the fresh, the new has come. I'm going to allow this life, the life of Jesus, to take possession of every part of my being. Father in heaven, teach me your ways. Teach me to, to, how to let your love affect my life. For your glory. And as I've received the life of Jesus. I'm going to do what the early church did. I'm going to continue. And devote myself. To the teaching of God's word. As I am right now. I'm devoting myself. To the fellowship of other believers. This local church. You've connected me to. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. Help us to develop love-filled relationships, godly relationships. Help us as we grow with one another, as we eat with one another, as we share communion with one another. Help us to walk in strong unity, faith, and prayer in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for every person now, every person, as we've shared the word of God, as you've impressed me today. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the reality of the life of Jesus. Let this life grow in every person. I pray that any person here in person or anyone online who has heard this message today, if they've never made Jesus the Lord of their lives, Father, help them to receive it. As they've heard, they have to receive it. They've heard about this life. Help them to receive this life. Help them to be born again. Help them to know it's a decision they must make. Help them to open up their hearts and receive Jesus today. In Jesus' name. Right now, pray this prayer after me. If you've never received Jesus as the Lord of your life, it's something you must receive. Jesus said, you must be born again. So pray this simple prayer. God in heaven, I heard your word today. And I recognize you made the provision 
You paid the price for me to receive your life, the life of Jesus and his nature on the inside of me. I believe Jesus is the son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me. I believe he was raised from the dead for my justification. And I receive Jesus now as my savior, as my Lord. Thank you now that I'm born again. Your life is in me. I've been transformed, regenerated with your life. And I'm going to live for you now, Father, all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Father, I pray every person who has received your life now, help them now to be devoted steadfastly to the teaching of your word, to the fellowship of believers, to having healthy relations, taking their place in the family of God and praying one for another. Thank you for this now. I thank you that we know now what real Christianity is. Let this life flow throughout your people. Bless them as we enter a new year. Let this life grow. We recognize this is the foundation for our success in life and our success in every endeavor. We speak your blessing now over every person in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, Father, I pronounce your blessing over every life every life as we go into a new year let the grace let the blessing of god let the peace of god let the favor of god rest upon every person every family of foundation for life every one of their children and grandchildren let the life of god be seen in their lives in a great measure a greater measure than they'd ever seen Lord, I pray for restoration in their lives. I pray for multiplication in their lives. I pray, Father, as they walk in your word, that there's such a desire to obey you, such a desire to take on that, the nature of Jesus. Let it overwhelm every life in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Let not that life be dormant in them, but let it have full expression in every relationship, in their business relationships, in their home relationships, in their local church relationships. Father, I thank you now. Let this life from, flow from them into their children and, and grandchildren. Let our homes be full of this life of God and the, the nature of God. Father, help us so we would, we would be patient with one another, loving with one another. Praise God. Be sincere with one another. Be a blessing to one another. We thank you now. And I declare that no weapon formed against your people shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against them in judgment shall be condemned and shown to be in the wrong. I declare your people are blessed. Everything they put their hands to prospers, increases, and grows. And they're blessed and they are a blessing. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. One more time. The life of God is in me. And I'm going to allow that life and the love of God grow in me and dominate my life, my relationships, my work, my family. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We love you all. We thank God for you. You're blessed. Amen. That's why we pronounce the blessing of God over your lives. Be blessed this, this year as we begin, as we begin the new year tomorrow. Don't forget tonight, come out for time of praise and worship. If you, if you make it, make it out. Don't, don't say I'm going to stay home, just relax. You can always sleep in tomorrow. So let's do it. Amen. Amen. Again, we really love you and thank God for you. And thank you for your love towards us. We really appreciate you. Amen. You are dismissed.